This past Monday was an important day for Ellen DeGeneres, mainly because it was the return of the show to the stage format after being hosted in Ellen's home during the pandemic, as well as the debut of her 18th season. However, the reason that many wanted to tune into the show was to see the apology that she gave out in regards to the various accusations and scandals that rocked her show over the summer. But despite building it up and doing it in the perfect spot, it doesn't seem to have made an impact at all. Allow us to show you why. And as always, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. Number five, not an improvement. To get right to the matter at hand, Ellen and the people behind the scenes were really hoping to go and start off season 18 with a bang via the apology about the scandal and the return to the Ellen stage, albeit with a virtual audience for the record. And given that many wanted to hear Ellen's apology, you'd think that the ratings would be up and that it would be a major deal. Well, it was a major deal, but not because of the ratings. The season premiere scored a 1.9 Nielsen household rating, the same number as last year according to Variety, which for the record is about what Ellen had during her past season, which was honestly an all-time low for the show overall. So her not getting this was honestly a pretty big deal. Though as many in the TV business know, it's not just about viewership, it's about demographics. In the key demographic of those aged 25 to 54, however, the Ellen DeGeneres show gained an 0.9 from an 0.8 in 2019. That makes it the show's strongest premiere in the 25 to 54 demographic since the 2016-2017 season. Ellen did lead in one major category, however, topping all talk shows in the female 18-34 category, earning a .6 and also garnered an impressive .8 for ages 18-49. to The talk show tied with The View, with both shows scoring 1.1 among women 25-54. to Though, given that Ellen and The View are mainly tailored to women, that's not too much of a surprise. Still, let's not lose the message here in all the numbers. A lot of people both on Ellen's show and in the industry felt that Ellen's premiere would encourage huge huge numbers, and that didn't happen. But why didn't that happen? Well, there are a lot of reasons per se, but arguably the biggest one might be number four, people don't want to support Ellen. We know this may sound a bit harsh and it might even sound odd when you consider that her ratings were about the same since the last season. But as Hollywood has shown time and time again, when you make a major mistake, you're going to have to pay for it. And whether Ellen wants to admit it or not, she and her team made a very big mistake in regards to the stories and accusations against her. All the original stories may have been disheartening in their own right, like with the complaint filed against Ellen by a staffer and how Ellen handled the pandemic situation poorly with her staff, it was a definitive blow to her credibility and reputation. However, as more and more stories came out, that was something else because people kept revealing the darker side of Ellen and then stories about her producers who were supposed to answer to her being racist and abusing their power came out and it made Ellen seem worse for not realizing what was going on with her own show. And so as things built up and Ellen refused to say anything on the matter because a source said she was just waiting for it to blow over, more and more people rose up to try and make Ellen pay for what she and her team were doing to the staff, so much so that a hashtag cancel Ellen movement was happening on social media and it was getting a lot of attention. Just as important, the heads of her network were already looking at replacements for her just in case this didn't calm down. True, she did make a written apology and then did a Zoom call with the staff to help smooth things over and apologize to them personally, but by that point, it may have been too late. Think about it, we sometimes shun celebrities when they make a tactless comment, let alone do things like treating staffers like peasants, as one complaint said or not controlling abusive producers. These elements have a cost, and Ellen knows that now. Sure, she may have maintained her ratings, but given her popularity before this mess started, those ratings should have been higher, even if only by a few hundred thousand. This shows that while Ellen may have tried to smooth things over, some people are just not buying what she's putting out, and that leads to a lesser viewership. And to be clear, that wasn't the only thing they weren't buying. Number three, why the apology didn't land. Regardless of whether they watched the show in full or not, a lot of people were curious about what Ellen DeGeneres was gonna say on her show in regards to the apology itself. Here's some of the highlights. All right, let's get to it. As you may have heard this summer, there were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show. And then there was an investigation. I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. I take that very seriously, and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. I know that I am in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility, and I take responsibility at what happens at my show. Ellen also added that she is a work in progress, and I am especially working on that impatience thing. This is The Ellen DeGeneres Show. I am Ellen DeGeneres. We've had a lot of conversations over the last few weeks about the show, our workplace, and what we want for the future. We've made the necessary changes, and today we are starting a new chapter. Now on the surface, that doesn't seem too bad. She seemed to get right into the apology and addressed what went wrong, and that she was sorry, and that she wanted to start a new chapter for her show, her staff, and of course, 
herself. So case closed, right? Wrong. Because if you listen to the full apology, which is on Twitter via the official Ellen handle, or on YouTube should you want to see it, you're going to hear a lot of joking and deflection. For example, the alright let's get to it bit was not the first line of her monologue. That was actually, so how was your summer? Mine was terrific. A terrible joke referencing how many of the accusations against her came during the summer months and that she clearly suffered for it. Furthermore, while the apology did address certain things about the scandals that rocked the show, it was hardly a comprehensive breakdown of it. She only said sorry to those affected as a blanket apology instead of pointing out the things done to those people and truly apologizing for all that happened. This summer, there were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show. The truth is, I am that person that you see on TV. I am also a lot of other things. If I've ever let someone down, if I've ever hurt their feelings, I am so sorry for that. Plus, she kept joking about the situation as if the situation needed comedy to be heard when it most certainly didn't. Such as her noting to never have the nickname the Be Kind Lady and even explaining the origins of that phrase as if that would exonerate her from being mean because she didn't mean to be called Be Kind Lady. She made light of the situation in just about every way she could and a lot of people were not happy about it. Anybody's thinking of changing their title or giving yourself a nickname, do not go with the be kind lady. Being known as the be kind lady is a tricky position to be in. In fact, not a day after that apology was made, various current and former employees spoke out about the apology and noted that it was tone deaf, was making fun of what happened to them, and in regards to the former employees, this was the first apology they had gotten during the whole ordeal, including during the investigation where they had to relive all that happened to them and the only apology they got was a joke-filled monologue from Ellen. Ellen also took a lot of time to deflect blame away from herself, including that work in progress line which was so disingenuous as to be insulting because if you don't know how to treat people nicely by 62 that's not a work in progress situation that's a lost cause and so given all of that you'd think that no one would be supporting ellen right wrong. Number two, the positive thoughts on the interview. Sadly, no matter what a certain person does, there are going to be various people who feel that someone can do no wrong or deserve a lot of chances to atone and such. And Ellen is no different. Following her speech, a source has said she poured her heart into her message. The insider told People Magazine she didn't hold anything back. It was poignant and funny and very much a candid take on what happened over the summer. She understands her audience wants to hear from her and was looking forward to talking directly to them on Monday. The source also said Ellen was connecting with the staff over Zoom ahead of the episode and knows that it's on her to make sure everyone feels like they're being heard and valued. But that right there is the problem. The source said Ellen wanted the staff to be heard and valued and yet she laced an apology with jokes? How does that work? And for someone who poured her heart and was very candid about everything, it's rather odd that there were so many deflections about why she's not the be kind lady and how she's a work in progress as we noted and more. The Twitter reaction was honestly 50-50, with 50% hating the apology and calling out Ellen for the various things we've mentioned, and the other 50% were praising Ellen and telling people to give her another chance and that she's trying to change. That's very disheartening because while forgiveness is divine, you never pay full price for late pizza. And that's what's going on here. Clearly, the majority of the people who watched were those who wanted to give Ellen a second chance, no matter what. And that's rather telling. Number one, what can Ellen do to get her ratings up? Getting back to the rating element, one must wonder if there's anything Ellen can do to go and get her ratings either back up to where they were a couple seasons ago or whether she can just get them to go up at all. The ironic thing is that one of the hardest hurdles has now been crossed as she has apologized and now can solely focus on trying to get the show back to its quality and high viewership. But as for what she needs to do to get her ratings up, it's hard to say because she has lost a lot of fans and there are some who won't support her no matter what she does. It might have to be a grind to get back to where the show wants to be, but if that's the case, then that's that's the cross they'll have to bear. And there you have it everyone, a look at Ellen's return to television and how it didn't really go as she hoped it would. Were you one of the people who watched the show the first time around or did you go online to see what the monologue was all about? Do you think that the scandal will lead to even lower ratings for Ellen or will she be able to recover? Let me know in the comments down below, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.